Welcome to another review of the most mid isekai ever made. I'm just kidding, but not really. Anyway, welcome to episode 6 review of the Aristocrats Otherworldly Adventure. We uh, are still going with this show, but this time we actually get some semblance of plot. Some semblance of somberness. It's amazing, right? Something actual, non-humor. Ooh, what a doozy. In this episode, though, you know, Kane, he goes to, to deliver some materials, is roped into battle, gets engaged to the captain because, of course, MC Syndrome strikes again. And then we get some actual somber moments and plot developments at the end of the episode. A bit amazing, I know, but we actually got something of non-humor happening in this episode. It is a miracle. So, I mean, this episode wasn't horrible. The last one was like 10 times worse. But, uh, you know, maybe there's some hope here. There might be some semblance of hope for actual character development, actual story. But who am I kidding? But, okay, just let me breathe my copium, okay? Let me just, just inhale this copium to the highest amount. So, so I can still have hope for this anime in, in, in the last six episodes. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Ken goes into this, you know, uh, to d deliver these materials. The captain comes in. She's a massive fucking battle junkie. Because, of course, she is. And uh, Ken has to mock battle with her. He beats her easily. Because, of course. And uh, then she basically gets... Falls over, swooning for him. And decides on the spot that, yeah, I have to marry this guy. Even though he's just 10. But, you know, whatever. So then she just goes to get permission to marry him, basically. He's dragged to the king. And, uh... Uh... We get that whole whole scene there. One thing though before we get to that point, she is called the Master Sword Person but that's the title she's given. Kane gets the same title later on in the episode. Like, Master Sword Person? Why Why not Sword Swordswoman? And then Swordsman or Kane. Why Sword Person? I mean, she, she's an, an elf. It, does that count? I mean, is person defined for human or humanoid? I don't know, just like Stuff like that is just weird to me. Why well, does not say Swordswoman is the title she gets? Because titles are specific to the person, right? Whatever. Moving on. So we get to this uh, scene where the king is like, Okay, what do you do now, Kane? Uh, with the whole engagement to the elf princess as the kingdom. We get some backstory on, on the ki elf kingdom as she's an elf. And that it's basically an independent nation. Yeah, yada yada yada. And she's basically... Effectively a princess, da da da, and all that. So, we get to the portion that I want to talk about here, when the king explains that, hey, he's already engaged to my daughter, Tellus, the princess, and the duke's daughter, Silk. To which she just responds, that just makes me want, that just makes me want him even more. Like, way more, right? To which uh, Graham, the father, says, you know, why? Why would that be your response? And... When, when, when I saw that, I thought, of course that's his resp her response. Like, that's just natural human evolutionary psychology. So let's talk about that, because I thought this would be a good, good thing to section in here. So, what we are seeing here in this scene is just standard pre-selection. What pre-selection is, is that one of the highest indicators of mate quality, when females are looking for a male mate... One of the highest indicators, or possibly the highest indicator, of mate quality is pre-selection. Meaning, have other females already approved or shown interest in, or is already with my the mate I'm interested in? If they are, that is a massive sign of quality to this new potential mate. Because she sees, hey, these other females have already chosen this mate. Meaning, he must be high quality, getting interest from other females. And that's just evolutionary psychology. So of course, yes, that would that would that would make her even more interested because it's like a massive step of quality on this guy. And especially as well, the reason she probably falls for him, of course it's anime, so you know, logic isn't the strong point here, but one of the other reasons she probably falls as hard as she does is that you know females innately want provisioning, protection, and some other factors, right, in their mate. That's just, you know, how their psychology works by by and large because of evolutionary psychology, etc. But you know, 
provisioning he has, of course, but she can provide for herself, so that's not really an issue. But protection, that's probably the big part here, where her interest really comes into play. Because no one else in the kingdom is as strong as she is. And newsflash, guys, women do not want men that are weaker than themselves. Like, they, they, they don't. <laughs> no, they do not want to be the protector in a relationship. So, when she meets someone, that can protect her, that is stronger than she is. She instantly, right, recognizes that, hey, this is a good mate for me. Like, it's the person that's even stronger than I am, the only person I've ever met to be stronger than myself. That is a good bet for a mate. Anyways, to not go on a tangent on that, I just wanted to, like, quickly talk about that portion of the episode because I thought it was an interesting showcase. Even though, yes, it's anime, it's not real life, but at the same time, it is, to, to an extent. So, anyways, back to the episode. We, we do see again that they said 30 orcs now. So, if you remember, I ranted a while back, episode 2 or 3, where the king in, in the audience, when he when Cain was made baron, was said to, to have beaten 50 orcs and like an orc king or whatever. But now, it's back to 30 orcs. Because when he actually defeated them, it was 30. But then it became 50, but now it's 30 again. So, did they seriously forget how many? Or did they try to like play it up in the audience with the king, but not really uh, telegraphing to the audience that he was exaggerating? Because it to me seems like they just forgot it was 30, so said 50, but then checked the material, it's like shit, it's 30, and then said 30 again. This might be a translation error, but at least in the subtitles, it says 50 and then 30. Well, 30, 50, and then 30 again. So unless it's a translation error, that just seems like, did you forget? Huh? <laughs> anyways, <laughs> anyways, m moving on. So, also in the meeting with the king, Cain says that no, he didn't tell her about the engagement to tell us in Silk because it's supposed to be confidential. Yes, exactly. So why? Did you literally, last episode, tell your new maids that you're engaged to tell us? You just said yourself, it's supposed to be confidential. But do your own maids not count? What? Consistency? Hello? Anyone? Anyone? So, I don't know. I have no, no clue how that's supposed to work, or how confidential is supposed to be <laughs> interpreted here. But that's just... Uh, okay. Okay, anime. Okay. I don't even know. But the highlight, highlight of the episode was definitely that we finally get some more somber, dark plot points. Well, not dark per se, but we finally get some more somber moments that where the king and everyone else starts getting a bit suspicious. Like, is Cain really a human? Is he something else? Is he God's chosen? A hero? And we do actually get, you know, a confrontation there where Cain is given this book to read. That's in Japanese, and he can actually read it, proving that he is not from this world, or he is no, something else, right? And he finally fesses up to it for the people there. And we actually get a moment of like, you know, you have to respect uh, where I come from and like this secret, or I have to leave this kingdom. And you get more of an actual plot development, characterization development, just some actual development in the show, beyond just ha 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 humor, lightheartedness, ha ha ha, which is nice to see. And by far the highlight of the episode. But just as quick as this moment of somberness and sincerity comes, it goes away again, and we get back to humor and lightheartedness, which you know is the point of this show. It's very lighthearted. It's very light. It's very humor esque. So don't expect a lot of these somber moments to continue. But uh, you know maybe we'll get a few more. But at least that was kind of nice. I did kind of like that as it was. I did. I did find the comment a bit funny though, it's like, hey, maybe you should be the king instead. Clearly, you're, you know, great. I mean, hey, not a bad decision. That would probably be a smart choice. The king isn't completely dumb. I still have some sort of hope that they will make the story a bit more serious. I mean, in the opening, uh, opening uh, of the anime, they do show Kane being a bit more adult and him kneeling at a grave, seemingly being distraught or sad or whatever. So maybe, just maybe, uh, high on copium here, but just maybe, 
we will start seeing some more serious plot and developments and story as of this episode. We still have six episodes to go, so I can pray and hope that that's where the story goes, because that might be at least somewhat interesting. But since all the characters, more or less, are still completely monotone, and almost basically no one has a personality, basically no one has like any that dimension to them except one, I don't have any hope at all really, but I'll keep breathing this copium until my last day, at least till the last episode of season one of this anime. With that being said, if you did like this video, please leave a like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment below if you have any questions or want to just uh, say anything to me or about the episode or anything else. I will see you all next time. Bye bye. ごめんなさい。騎士団長と模擬戦をしたらそうなってしまいました。うーん。成人する間に何人になっていることやら。まあ、私は楽しいからいいけどね。良くないです。無闇に婚約者を増やすようなことをしないでください。<笑><笑>